This Haida raven's tail robe, called the Hageman Idansu robe, represents a breakthrough. It's significant to Lisa Hageman because it's her first robe. It took her five months, seven days a week of 10 to 12 hour days to weave it. But it's also historic. This was the first Z-twist robe, fully Z-twist robe in over 150 years. And that the Z-twist weaving is a defining trait. When you look at a robe that's woven with a counterclockwise weave, you know that that's a Haida piece. And that's an unbroken thread from our ancestral weavers to today. It's a solitary art, and even with nimble flying fingers, it takes an hour to weave a single row. To work in this traditional art form takes a leap of faith. We have to be sort of looking at life through rosy colored glasses to make this decision, right? I mean, you're, you're creating a piece that you know is going to appeal to a small audience and, and hope that each piece finds a home. So every piece is a leap of faith. Being an artist in a genre that isn't well known is a huge leap of faith. On the other hand, being surrounded by tall trees full of eagles and ravens, which represent the clans of her family, certainly offers some solace while she works on the deck of her mother's home in Masset. As you can feel the sun on your back and you hear the eagles, you can see why it's not hard to work long hours and come to the office every day. <laughs> it's not hard to work seven days a week when it's like this. Lisa Hageman's dream is to see weaving recognized as the high art it is, like carving. The carvers of jewelry and totem poles have, they're just so well known. You know, people have such an appreciation and this is a quieter art. So she also weaves in public, in galleries and museums, to demonstrate the skill and patience and vision that go into it. And it's back to the fact that most weaving is done in quiet or in private and it's the finished piece that's brought into view, so you don't see the time and the effort. I think it's important that people see what's behind creating each piece. For Lisa, weaving is only half the job. She also spins her own warps, sometimes a thousand feet or more. It's months of sitting there creating nothing but a mass of white wool. You know, there's no there's no stitch that gets done. You don't get the, the satisfaction of seeing a, a pattern come out. It's just days and weeks and months of all this white wool. The time spent spinning and weaving puts a severe limitation on how much she can produce. What's amazing is that in my lifetime that maybe I'll be able to create 20 more robes above and beyond the hegemony dancer robe. So that's not, you know, 21 large scale pieces in a, in a career. It's not a lot. She calls weaving a gentle madness. Because it's a delicate work and there's a quietness and a softness and a solitude, but there's a madness, right? There's an obsession to create these pieces. And the, I went to visit my sister the other day who lives, she lives an hour and a half away and I had to bring two skeins of wool to show her, you know, for, the, for a project that's in my mind. And when I arrived, I stepped into the door and she said, oh, I have wool to show you. So it's, it's this pervasive, pervasive addiction. This is not something you do for the money, but there are other greater rewards. When Chief Idansu walked into the hall, when the name Queen Charlotte returned to the crown to the queen, and we said our name has always been Haida Gwaii and this is what we want to be known as. When he walked in and he was wearing his, his headdress, his, his carved headdress and there were all of the ermine pelts going down his back and the ermine pelts were draped over the robe that I created. It, you know, that was my reward to see that piece living.